Good morning, One Church Kingdom. Thank you for tuning in. For those Good of you morning. that tuned in at 10.15 when we started, you missed a very cool cameo of <laughs> me not realising the camera was on me and I was humming the like pre-service countdown. Ding, ding. <laughs> this is why you need to catch up. The embarrassing moments always happen right at the beginning. <laughs> yes, you need to dial in at 10.15 uh, if 10 you want to see the embarrassing bits. If you want to see this silly mug do silly things. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, it's great to have you with us. And uh, if you're new today as well, an extra special welcome to you. Thank you for joining us. If you type new in the comments, one of our team would love to welcome you and just say hi as well, just to let you know, uh, let, let us know that you're here. Yes. Let us know that you're with us. Um, but to everybody that's with us normally, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Continue to engage in the comments as well. Don't forget to like and share this stream on your Facebook page as well mm -hmm. so that others can see. Let people know that yeah. uh, they can join us today on church. Everyone is welcome uh, to be with us as well so like and share and just keep absolutely. talking in the comments absolutely and if you tuned in last week i um, gave a little spoiler alert we were saying about more now more than ever as we begin lockdown 2.0 um <laughs> connecting and, and getting involved is so key yes. and so important and we um as much as we love joining you online um we just and you can obviously comment and all of those kinds of things but it's just um, having that time to be able to check in with one another, um, pray for one another, um, share praise reports together. So for the first time at One Church Kingdom, after the service this morning, there's going to be a, mm -hmm. a, a link in the comments for you to join us with a, just a quick 10 minute Zoom call just to check in with you. We just want to say hi to you in person. If you've got any um, pr prayer requests or you just need some time in prayer, we'll be here for you. But wouldn't it be great just to get in, get in, um, come and see us? at the end of the service as yeah. if 2d not 3d but it's just still that. it'll be nice it'll be nice we'll yeah. be we'll be sat here we will be engaging with you as well so yeah. uh yeah like anna said if you're new and you want to just say hi and meet some people um or if you want to just we're just going to chat we're going to yeah. catch up we're yeah. going to sit back and relax like that something like that in the zoom call after the service <laughs> so uh yeah post church Zoom Hangouts, oh, yeah. uh, they are starting for the month of November after mm -hmm. every service, which is um, going to be really, really good. Now, today is really exciting because uh, I'm going to be sharing with you today our vision and our heart for 2021. So we're going to get really, really excited about that. I believe God has put some uh, amazing things in the hearts of our team, and we're mm -hmm. just really looking forward to sharing some of that yeah. with you today. Um, that is going to be really good. We're also going to be telling you about what's happening at Christmas. How many days till Christmas? Ooh, 47 days, a Anna. Scarily few 47 amount. days till Christmas. <laughs> Have you brought me anything yet? I've brought you my love. I don't want it. <laughs> I want <laughs> presents. And so I'll get your cup of tea. <laughs> are you ready for Christmas? Have you brought your presents yet? Are you ready to go? Why don't you tell us in the comments? Yeah. Uh, what are you doing for Christmas? Do you yeah. stay at home? Do you go away? Do you uh, do you do Christmas dinner yourself, or do you leave that to the to the restaurants? Yeah. Have you brought all your presents yet? You can talk about that. We'll also talk. Maybe we'll talk about Christmas a little bit in our post church hangout maybe. as well. Cool. And we'll we'll talk a little bit more about these presents yeah. you're going to buy me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which will be good. Um, and then the other thing we're going to be doing today as well, we've switched our service around a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be going straight into my message now because at 11 o'clock we're going to take two minutes um, to remember those that have sacrificed so much yeah. and given for us. Um, so we're going to join with the rest of our nation on our uh, Remembrance yeah. Sunday. Because of the lag, it might be 20 seconds, 30 seconds it late, but we're aiming for 11. <laughs> and you might be watching this later on today, so... <laughs> So yeah, so we're going to go straight into my message now. So hopefully you've got your drinks ready. You've got your pens, paper, notepads ready. I hope you've got your hearts ready uh, as I just share with you our vision for 2021. Hey, good morning, One Church. It is so, so good to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I know it's online, okay? And it would be absolutely better if I could be delivering this message today in person. But, uh, but let me tell you that you being here online, engaging in the comments, encouraging one another as you do, and gathering together, it is so important, especially today on what is uh, an absolutely incredible Sunday. Because I'm going to be sharing with you today our vision 
for 2021. And the title of my message today is Heart for the House. Heart for the House. And this message is all about you and I, whether we're brand new to faith, whether we've been around the block a few years now. Um, This is all about you and I making a decision to take ownership and responsibility for God's house, for his church. See, when you became a Christian, it was a personal, a very personal decision. But that decision was, when you made that decision, you became part of a community and a gathering. The Bible calls it a church or a body, and every single one of us in that body is important and is valued. And that's why the Bible says, do not neglect meeting together. Uh, For Jesus and for those early Christians, their faith was so powerfully expressed through a community that prayed together, that learned together, that grew together, that met the needs of the people together. It is so powerful when we come together. In fact, the Bible says that when two or three are gathered in his name, which is what we're doing right now, right? When two or three are gathered, his presence is with us. His power and his authority is with us. You are not on your own. You are not isolated. You are not forgotten. God has heard your prayers. He will fulfill his promises for you. This is the church gathered. Now, I want to tell you a little story about my wife because she's an incredible woman, okay? I, there are so many things. She's incredibly gifted, incredibly talented. She's a brilliant wife, a fantastic mum. She's a brilliant teacher. She's a, an amazing singer, creative writer. She's a great pastor and all around just fantastic person. You, you know her, you know her well. But there is one thing, and I want to let you in on a little secret here for, for those of you who don't know. There is one thing that Anna doesn't do quite so well. And that is to dance in any sort of rhythm. (laughs) I don't know if you've ever been to a wedding at one church when Anna's dancing, but it's like as if her arms and her legs move completely independently from the rest of her body. It's like me when I'm singing. I, I love, I absolutely love to sing, but I'm guaranteed to get the wrong notes, the wrong words, the wrong timing. And uh, I I tell you this because I think it's a very accurate picture of what it looks like when when Christians neglect meeting together and taking ownership for their place in the house. It's like as if they are moving and living independently from the rest of the body. One church, I want you to know this today, that the Christian life is not an independent life. In fact, the New Testament Greek word alechon, or alelon, can't pronounce it, alelon, which means, it means this, it means one another, and it's used no less than 100 times in the New Testament. A third of these times are commands on how we get along together. Another third are commands on how we are to love one another. About 15% of them are commands on how we should uh, live and have an attitude of humility toward one another. And then there's a whole bunch of others that cover every facet of doing life together. We recently relaunched our grow groups and we asked people to commit to those groups every week because when we are one anothering each other, taking ownership and responsibility in our place in the body, gathering together behind a common vision and a purpose and values That is how the church changed the world. That is how the church will go on changing the world. And that is how one church, Kainsham, is going to go on to change our town and our nation. If this year has taught us anything, it's that we don't know what's coming around the next corner, right? But one thing that we do know is this, that God is building his church. Matthew uh, chapter 16, verse 18 says this, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. The church is you. The church is a generous, faithful, God-loving, servant-hearted, and adventurous, passionate group of individuals who gather together in this unstoppable community of faith called One Church, Kingdom. One Church, I want you to know this today, and I want you to hear me today. 
This is not time for us to retreat and to back down and to disengage. This is a time for us to move forward, to live big and to dream big, to serve the vulnerable and meet the needs of those in our community, to be a blessing to the whole community and to build the church and grow together. I heard this amazing quote this week, and it said this, that your place in the house of God is a given, but your ownership of God's house is a decision. I'll say that again. Your place in God's house is a given, but your ownership of God's house is a decision. I love that. I love that your place is a given. In other words, that means that you are welcome. You are loved. You can belong here. And Bible says that Jesus came so that the whole world would know that you are that they are loved and that there is a place for them in God's house. But your ownership of the house is a decision. Maybe you're sat here today, maybe you're watching online, you've never made that decision to, uh, to become a Christian, to give your life to Jesus, to, to accept that welcome into his house. And at the end of the service, we're going to tell you how you can do that. And we're going to pray a short prayer with you. But it's, there, it, Jesus has done everything for you. You simply just need to accept that decision, accept his forgiveness. And uh, he welcomes you into his family and into his house. But we have a decision to make whether we will take ownership for that house. Do you remember that feeling that you had when you got the keys to your first house? I remember for me and Anna what an amazing feeling it was when we walked through those doors for the first time as owners of the house. It was absolutely incredible. Now, don't get me wrong, there was work that we needed to do. We were, we had so we were very grateful for the furniture that we that was given to us, but you know, it wasn't necessarily to our taste. We knew that there was lots to do in the house. But but what came along with being owners of the house was responsibility too. When you own your house, you don't have your parents or your landlord anymore to pay the bills, fix the boiler, cut the grass, fix the, the broken uh, walls and decorating and all of those things. That is now your responsibility. And there comes a point in every Christian's life where they have to make a decision. Will I become an owner of the house I know my place is given. I know I'm welcome here. I belong here. And this is a great family and community to, be, to belong to. And I'm loved. But will I become an owner? Will you take personal responsibility for being the church, for building the church, and for serving the community and reaching the world around you? I am an owner. I am not a spectator. I am not passing through. I am not a tenant or a temporary roommate. I am an owner. I own my place in the body of Christ. I am not a consumer of church when it is convenient. I am the church. I am the church committed beyond my circumstances that call me away from responsibility. I am the church, committed beyond my comfort that doesn't like it when I step out and live for others. I am the church, committed beyond my, circ my convenience that holds me back when I am tired and when there are easier options. I will own my place in God's house. You know, for Anna and I, for our family home, we want it to be a place of refuge and of peace a place where our kids can grow up and thrive in their lives. We want it to be a place that when people come through the doors, they immediately feel warm and welcomed and at peace and at home. We, we take pride in our house. We look after our house. If there are things that need fixing, they're fixed. Maybe not quite when Anna asks them to be fixed, but they will be fixed. We, we decorate the house. We take pride in it. We look after our house and we don't ignore the issues or the problems. We don't expect other people to come into our house and raise our kids and do all the things that we should take responsibility and ownership for. And there's this verse in Matthew 20, uh, passage in Matthew 21 where Jesus walks into the temple courts and it says that he drove out all those that were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables 
of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. And he said, it, was, it is written, he said to them, my house, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. Jesus took responsibility and ownership for his place in the body of Christ. He said, my house. Do you call one church your home? Let me remind you, your place is given, but your ownership is a decision. Will you commit to the vision and the values? And to close this message today, I want to share with you our heart for Vision 21. We are moving forward as a church. This is going to be our biggest year yet. And we are so excited about the things that God has put on our heart. And so I've already kind of shared or leaked a little bit of this earlier on in my message. But our vision is threefold. The first thing is this, and this is something that is an absolute priority for us in 2021. And that is to serve the vulnerable and those who are most in need in Kainsham. We don't have all the details of how we're going to do that, but I want you to know that we are currently planning and preparing to launch some of our first community service initiatives. We're going to be actively looking for opportunities to meet the needs of those who are vulnerable in our community through practical acts of service. We're going to be building relationships with other organizations that are already working in the community. And we're going to be looking to provide baby care packages for those uh, vulnerable new mums. And we're going to be continuing to support, uh, to support the work of the food bank in Kainsham throughout the year as well. Chris and Sarah, who lead our outreach, our Go uh, projects and vision in Kainsham, they have got an incredible passion and vision for serving Kainsham and church. It is so exciting that we get to serve our community together, that we are going to be, be a part of uh, God's church making a difference in our town. The second thing that we're going to do next year is this, that we want to be a blessing to the whole community. We, we don't know what next year will look like, but these are some of the things that we're planning. We're going we're gonna to do some events at Easter, at, in the summer and at Christmas to just bless the whole community. Some of you may remember our summer festivals. Our summer festivals in Kenshin Park were, uh, are like events where uh, everybody is welcome. There is no cost. It is completely free. You come and just enjoy a party with the community. All the inflatables, all the activities, all the fairs, everything that's going on is free. And it's just from one church to the community to bless them and have a great time. We're going to be looking at doing that again uh, next year. Uh, it's also our heart to continue to pray for the community. We're going to take uh, regular time to walk around the community praying for it because prayer is powerful and it makes a difference and we want to pray for the peace and the prosperity of the town that we live in and so we're going to continue to pray for people in our town. Someone once said to a friend, a pastor friend of mine, he said how big is your church and he said to them well it's about 600,000 people and he was like wow that's incredible he said but Unfortunately, 599,500 of them, they just don't know it yet. See, this pastor, he understood and he recognized that he, his heart was for the whole city. He wanted the church to be a blessing to the whole city. And he saw the entire city as his church. And one church, there are 20,000 people living in Kingsham people that we can be praying for, people that we can be serving and be a blessing to. So I want, you to, I want you to understand this today. Never think that we are just a small church. Never think, never sit there thinking there's not much for me to do here. We need you. There is so much need in Kingsham and we need people who say, I will own this house. The third thing that we uh, are going to be doing next year is we're gonna to continue to build the church. Firstly, we're gonna be meeting the needs of the vulnerable in our community. Secondly, we're gonna be a blessing to the whole community. And thirdly, we're gonna to continue to build 
the church. Next year, we're going to be relaunching our live gatherings together, which is going to be, it's going to look different to what it looked like before, but it's going to be absolutely incredible. And we're going to need volunteers and we're going to need teams that are going to help us to make those Sunday encounter experiences the most powerful and most welcoming experience for anybody who walks through our doors. We need creative people. We need our young people. We need students. We need, uh, we need musicians. We desperately need musicians. We, we're one area in our church that we really need leaders to rise up in is with our kids and with our young people. We need business leaders and singers. We need friendly people who can just welcome people and make people feel so warm and welcome in our church. We are going to build our church. We need people who say, whatever it takes, I will take ownership. I will take responsibility and I will help make this happen. We already have people interested in baptisms next year. So we're going to be having some more baptism parties, which is exciting. And uh, we're going to be launching a well-being course, uh, which is just going to be fantastic. We'll tell you more about that uh, when we're ready. But that's we've got the well-being course as well as many other grow courses that are going to help you grow in your discipleship and faith as a Christian. And uh, we're going to be introducing as well brand new leadership development tools and training. We are, as a church, we're passionate about growing and developing leaders, not just in the church, but people who will lead in the community, entrepreneurs, business people, wherever you are, whatever your job. We want to raise and train up leaders who can help lead our church, people that can make things happen, people that gather people around them. And so we're going to be developing leaders as well. We're also going to be celebrating next year 100 years of One Church history. And lastly, I have to say this because you may have thought I've forgotten, but I haven't. We are absolutely 100% planning to have another One Church family weekend away. And if you have never been to one of those, they are just the absolute highlight of the year. What a great time that is going to be. So that's our vision for 2021, people. We are so excited about what God is going to do. And I want to ask you again, will you make a decision to own your place in this house? Will you take responsibility for that vision? Will you give your time and your prayers and your finances and your gifts and your energy to this vision? Will you give your commitment to this community? You know, Anna and I can't do it on our own. Chris and Sarah and Mel and Andy and the team, we cannot do it on our own. We need all of us to say, I will take responsibility. I will make a decision to own this. One church is my home. This is where I belong. I will own my responsibility in this house. We will make a difference in Cainton and we will make a difference in this nation. I want to finish by just reading this one Bible verse to you. Galatians chapter 6 verse 5 to 18 and this is in the message translation it says this make a careful exploration of who you are and the work that you have been given and then sink yourselves into it don't be impressed with yourself don't compare yourself with others each of us must take responsibility for doing our creative best you can with your own life be very sure now, you who have trained to a self-sufficient maturity, that you enter into a generous common life with those who have trained you, sharing all good things that you have and experience. Do not be misled. No one makes a fool of God. What a person plants, he will harvest. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others and ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. All... All he'll have to show for his life is weeds. But the one who plants in response to God, letting, go, uh, letting God's spirit do the growth work in him, harvests a crop of real life, eternal life. So let's not allow ourselves to be fatigued in doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, Every time we get the chance, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. I want to pray for you this morning. I want you to close your eyes 
wherever you are in this place, I just want you to take a moment to pray because I believe God's speaking to you. And I believe God wants to impart some vision into you this morning. And I believe God wants to impart a spirit of ownership and responsibility into us this morning. So God, we thank you this morning for the sacrifice and the service of those that have gone before us. Father God, we, th we thank you for those people that if it had not been for them taking ownership and responsibility for the vision that you put in them and the vision you put in the church, that, that one church would not be here today doing what it is doing. And so God, we pray now that we would take over the ownership and the responsibility and the passion and heart for this house. God, I pray that we could be a blessing with our resources, with our time, with our finances. God, that one church would make a difference in our community. God, we want to see the needs of the vulnerable and those who are most in need. We want to see those needs met, God. We don't want to see people going hungry in our town. God, we want to see miracles of healing and breakthrough. God, we want to see the lost coming home. Father God, we pray this in your name and we thank you for the incredible year ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for that message, exciting, Chris. It? it was, yeah, really, really excited. Next year is going to be the biggest year to date. I am super excited. Thank you for sharing your heart and our vision for the next year. And at the um, in just a moment, uh, we're going to take our two-minute silence. But um, after our two-minute silence, uh, we're going to kind of explain a little bit more as to how you can get involved, how you can be a part of making 2021 our best yet. Yes. Um, and yeah, so we're about to go into our two minute silence uh, in a moment. Uh, and after that, we're going to go into a time of worship. Um, so I'm just going to share a scripture with you from John 15 verse 13. And it says, for the greatest love of all is a love that sacrifices all. And this great love is demonstrated when a person sacrifices his life for his friends. And we're just going to take two minutes silence now to remember those that have um, laid down their life so that uh, we may have our freedom today. Thank you.
you just pray for us now, Chris and Stuart? Yeah, so Father God, we just want to thank you this morning. God, God, we just join with our nation right now as we remember the lives that were given, the sacrifices that were made. And God, we just take this time to remember and, to re as, a, and as a sign of respect for those that have given so much for our freedom. And Father God, for those families that are still impacted by those decisions and those sacrifices that were made, Lord Father God, we pray that you would be near to them, God, that you would know, uh, that they would know your presence and your peace and your love. Mm. Lord Father God, we pray even now at, 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 in times of war and times of conflict, Lord Father God, we pray for your peace to come to this earth, Lord mm. God. Lord, we pray for your salvation to come into our, our lives, Lord Father God. Mm. And Lord, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus, mm. to eradicate evil for good, to come and bring your kingdom to this world, Lord mm. Father God. And so we thank you now, we remember together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to go into a time of worship now and then we're going to just do some response to Chris's incredible message this morning. Thank you. message was fantastic this morning I am super fired up and I know that you guys at home mm. of course are as well and um, if you've been watching our service this morning and you've really felt like God has impressed on your heart that you want to make this house your home and you want to take ownership uh, there's a few ways that you can go about that so Chris uh, go through a few uh, 
ways you can get involved. Yes. So, well, first thing, first thing is this, um, that you need to keep turning up, okay? So uh, to our online services, uh, midweek parents, whatever we're doing, we'd love you to keep turning up because that is going to really help us as we build. Um, we're also going to... Um, uh, yeah, also as well, the I said midweek programme, I've lost my track. <laughs> I now. know, I was number two, which is join a grow group or keep coming to grow group. And You're not you doing it, it, are you? You said well, it. I'll, I'll, do it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll do it all. I'll, you but sit you there. you said it already, a... so I thought he's already gone with Here, number have two. have a drink. <laughs> so... <laughs> Keep turning up. Join a grow group. Make sure you're part of the midweek program, midweek community as well. Um, one of the other ways, we're going to put a slide up on the screen now for you um, because we want, uh, one of the ways you can get involved is to, uh, to give financially to the vision. So maybe you want to give a one-off gift. Um, I'm going to ask Ryan now, who's producing, currently on his phone, should be listening to me. <laughs> If you can put that We've there, we go. We've both told off by Pastor Chris today. Both of them are <laughs> slacking today. Are you right I will do it all myself. <laughs> um, we would love for you to be able to give to uh, the vision. So if you want to do that, you can give a one-off gift or you can um, give regularly to the vision. Um, the way you do it is go to our website, weareone.church forward slash giving, and you'll come up to this page here. It gives you our standing order details, and you can also click uh, a link to be able to give through the app as well. So uh, we would love for you to be able to give financially to support the vision. And the last way as well that you can get involved and help us make Vision 21 happen is to join us on Team, yes. which would be really good as well. So if you are interested at all in saying, do you know what, like Anna said, I'd love to make One Church my home. How do I get involved? Then keep turning up, yeah. join a grow group. You can give financially, but you can also join us on Team as well make it happen we need volunteers I've, i said in the message we need everybody and anybody to just get involved to help us make this happen yeah. so uh so those are the ways that you can help us in the next steps now the way you can do that if you want to know any more is you need to go you can either go uh message in the comments you can private message us as well um, and there's also going to be a link put in the comments now to uh, our Linktree site, yeah. which has got everything you need to know about how to give and how to get involved. Mm. So that's how you do it. And I just wanted to say as well, I mentioned in my message that perhaps you're sat there today and you've never given your life to Jesus. You say, mm. today I want to give my life to Jesus. Yeah. I want to become part of that family. I want to belong. Um, and I said that I would let you know how to do that. So we're going to say a very quick prayer now. Mm. And if that is you, you simply just have to say this prayer. I mentioned yeah. before that we just have to say, God, uh, we're sorry for going our own way, for living our own lives. Yeah. God, we want to put our lives into uh, your hands. We want to trust you with our lives. And we thank you for all that you've done. The Bible says that all the suffering, all the hurt, all the pain, everything we experience in this life is as a result of sin. And sin is effectively turning our backs on God and doing all the wrong things that we do. And the Bible says every single one of us has sinned. Every single one of us. There's not a single person on this planet who can sit there and say, I'm, I'm just the perfect human being. And Jesus came and he takes away all of that. Yeah. And he gives us a fresh start. He takes away all of our sin. And as yeah. a result of that, our relationship with God is restored. We can know God personally in our hearts, in our lives. Yeah. We can experience him, but also that we, at the end of life, we get to overcome death. We get to resurrect with him to new life mm. in heaven, mm. new body, yeah. no more suffering, no more tears. Mm. That's the gospel message in very short, <laughs> very short. And if you want to make that decision today, we're going to say a quick prayer for you now. Yeah. Just say this in your own heart, wherever you are. Mm. Dear God, thank you that you gave your life mm. for me. Father God, I, f I pray for forgiveness mm. for the things that I've done wrong. Mm. And I thank you that because of your son, Jesus, mm. my relationship with you can be restored. Yeah. The, the original purpose that you created me can be restored. Mm. To God, to know you mm. and to have a relationship with you. And so I thank you now for Jesus. Yeah. I invite him into my life mm. and I want to live for him from yeah. this day to the end of days. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. 
Do you know what? You can take a breath now because I know what I'm doing. You I'll know do you, you've section. caught up now, Brian. If you caught up, section. everybody <laughs> caught up with the program. <laughs> right now, it is my absolute excitement, like privilege, to uh, announce our next. Uh, video. Uh, yes, we have our Christmas promo about to happen. Um, so Chris and Sarah are going to tell you a little bit about what we're going to get up to, how we're going to bless the socks off our community. And yeah, so I'm not going to say any more. Just hand over to Chris and Sarah for our Christmas promo. <laughs> I'm joined today by my good friend Fred the Elf and we are on a mission. Fred, what are we doing? So, this Christmas, because of Covid, we can't have the usual One Church Carol concert that we wanted to have, so instead we're taking Christmas out into the community to people's doors. Brilliant, so what's that going to look like? So on the 12th and the 13th of December this year, Santa himself is going to be joining us. We're going to go out into Canesham, we're going to knock on people's doors and provide them with a present for the, the children, with a goodie bag for the family. Amazing, that sounds great. So uh, we're going to do our first drop off now I think. So what have we got? We've got uh, present ready, gift bag ready, face shields on, mask on. Masked up. And back our hands. And off we go! Off we go. So the great news is this hasn't happened yet and there's a chance for everyone to get involved. So how can we get involved? Good question, Fred. Well, uh, there should be something that everyone can do. So in the run up to the 12th and 13th of December, we are going to need people to help us wrap the presents. We're going to need people to help us get the food to go into the food bags and put those together. Um, and we would love it if everyone would be praying with us for this event too. Um, we're hoping to offer to pray for the families um, and to, uh, yeah, just bless them this Christmas. So praying that people will be ready to receive from us would be great. And then on the day, 12th and 13th, uh, we're going to need at least eight people to be helping Santa out doing those deliveries. Um, finally, you can also give financially to help to bless this project. So if uh, if people want to do that, how do they how do they let us know? Sure. So if you're interested in being involved, just just uh, contact us. So Chris or Sarah Hansford, contact us direct or, or get in touch with your Grow Group leader and say, hey, I want to be part of this mission. We're really hoping the whole church can get involved um, in doing something uh, as part of this mission this Christmas. Yeah, this is a way we can be the unstoppable church, even amidst COVID. So let's do this together. Brilliant. See you there. Oh, so excited <laughs> about so that. Good. I can't wait. I want Fred the Elf to visit me. That is my favourite <laughs> video of 2020 so far. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> but just as that video said, please sign up by letting Chris and Sarah know. Um, message them. Message this page. Message a grow group leader. All hands on deck. We can all get involved in, um, to bless our community this Christmas. Yes, and also as well, following that uh, that mission, we're going to be doing an online carol concert, uh, which is going to be fantastic, which we'll be inviting all yeah. of those uh, families to as well. Yeah. Uh, there'll be more gifts given away mm -hmm. and great carols as usual. So. Yeah. Uh, we're really excited about Christmas. Yeah. Thank you, Chris and Sarah, for all you're doing Absolutely. to plan an app. And if you listen, it kind of sounds sound a little Jingly bit like Christmas as well. Bells. Well, we're going to talk no? more about Christmas. <laughs> Not quite, but we're going to talk more about Christmas in a minute in our post-church Zoom hangout. Mm -hmm. So we would love for you to join us. Yeah. The details are going to come on the screen in a minute. Yeah. Uh, but before we go to that... Do you want to just let people know yeah, what's happening next so week? Join us next Sunday also, um, as in a moment for the Zoom Hangout, where we are going to be launching our new teaching series, which is called, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to look because I forgot, <laughs> Unwrapping the Generous Gift of Hope. Yes. Unwrapping the Generous Gift of Hope. So please Exciting. join us. Excited for that next series as well yeah. but guys thank you for joining us here this morning we will see you in a minute in our zoom hangout have a great week take care see you soon god bless goodbye <laughs>